We're on tape. My name is Ruth Ann Johnson. I'm 86 years old, and I have lived in the Chicago area, or Arlington Heights, most all my life, actually. My husband and I knew each other for, well, we were married 49 years. We knew each other over 54. He was, well, as they say, the love of my life, my best friend. And we, we never had children, but we did enjoy both of us working all our lives, enjoyed a wonderful retirement. But what happened toward the end was just unbelievable. He was usually very healthy, and I had no real problems. But at some point, we had some issues with heart. We were concerned, and he made it known to me, whatever happens, I do not want to have to be in a hospital or a nursing facility. I don't want the treatment of being treated like a baby. If I get to that point, promise me you'll never let, let me stay in a hospital if this heart problem becomes a problem. But his heart problem didn't. It didn't progress. He had some things, but it didn't progress. So we enjoyed our retirement, traveled over the U.S. a lot. He was a great photographer, had been a food chemist in his, his uh, working life, and I was in an advertising for a food company. That's how we met. And finally, about uh, 10, well, it was about 12 years ago now, it, he had a pain. He had a knee pain, and he was going to go in and see about his knee surgery. And he asked the doctor, he said, I have such pain in my chest. So they sent him for x-rays. The doctor was on the phone. He said, you have multiple myeloma. Mm. Sent him to, a, to a, um, an oncologist. And he said, "There's we searched some of the treatments that had been written up to some patients in England and that. And one patient said that had he gone through the treatment, he wouldn't have done it. And that patient did die right away afterwards, didn't treat him or didn't cure him. Anyhow, uh, it got only a matter of about a month and he was in such agony, he asked the doctor for some painkillers, which he got, and he tried to use it very sparingly because when he did use enough of it to kill the pain, he went to sleep where he couldn't function that way. So he tried not to use it so much and he wanted to continue trying to put his life in order. Finally, he said, the day has come and I am not going to live with this. I'm not going to get treatment. There is no treatment. This is now 12 years ago. So there's no real treatment. Maybe there are some changes today, but he decided this is it. And the only option was a suicide that, that I would not participate in. There's no way that under the law of Illinois or anywhere I would be arrested for helping him commit suicide. So we had a gun for, we had done it for travel, we, just safety, and we had a gun in the house. And he was curious about guns. Well, I knew what he was going to do. So the last few words, we stood in the kitchen and um, I went to hug him, and this is what I wanted to say. He said, don't hug me, don't hug me, it hurts so bad. And that just, I'm having trouble now. At any rate, he um, got in the car, and he drove himself to a local, our local park in Arlington Heights, where he shot himself. And then I sat in the living room waiting for the police to come, because I knew they would come. And. Um, he was so thoughtful that he had put a, an address in his pocket so that when the police came, also came my friend who had been alerted and she came in and told me that, she, I, I asked her, how did you know? And she told me how, and anyway, I'm having trouble with this interview. All I can say is if we had had a law in Illinois at that time that would have allowed him to take a drug to, to end his life peacefully. He could have died in my arms, quietly. He could have said goodbye, I could have hugged him, but that was not allowed because of the law that doesn't exist. And I just hope that, that my experience, along with many, many other people who probably go through the same thing, could have the right to have a way of 
slipping away when they're ready to go, and that their family, or wife in this case, could have been there and quietly said goodbye. So I do hope that the law of some sort can get passed in Illinois, and very soon, because it's no time to wait. And uh, that's really what I would like to, to promote. If we can just get it done faster, the better. And I know it's a law around the country in five states, but Illinois is a big state and ought to have it right along with California and Washington and Oregon. And, and uh, well, I understand most of Canada is ready. Well, part of Quebec has already has the law and the rest of Canada will very soon. And, just urge all the legislators to, to look at this as a choice in your life. It's a choice, it's not a mandate. You do not have to use it. So that if the law is there and a person really wants to escape the pain and suffering, they can do it quietly with, in their own time with their own life. They don't have to if they're religious or have some other reasons they don't want to do it. They don't have to do it. So I just stress that part. So. Thank you for letting me give me my story. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Thank you, Bridget.